The 5% GDP growth target came in on the lower side of economists' forecasts and initially caused a sell-off on the stock markets. But market watchers say the knee-jerk reaction is not really warranted. Rather, the target is a realistic assessment that China has moved into a new phase of growth. This kind of target growth rate has not been seen for nearly 30 years. So people need to forget about China being a fast-growing economy and accept the fact that it is maturing. And there are growing pains there. When you, when, when you have been so used to growing at 10% or more, and then suddenly you're only growing at 5%, it's a bit like driving on the PIE, where you're driving at a very fast rate, and then suddenly you're coming off the slip road, and then you're driving at a very slow rate. Your mind is still thinking that I'm driving at a very fast rate, and when I have to slow down, it feels very painful, and you're not used to it. But slower growth shouldn't deter investors from moving back into China, especially if the economic indicators remain positive. We're seeing strong indicators from the rebound in industrial production, um, consumer confidence is rising, uh, retail spending is improving, and of course the PMIs for February um, were very strong. Um, so if we map uh, what the indicators we're getting from the new growth target, uh, the amount of liquidity um, that is in the system, uh, it does suggest to us that the rally is perhaps only about a third or halfway through. So there's plenty of time for investors to um, watch and evaluate opportunities. And I guess, you know, the other key thing, of course, too, is that so far the macro data is surprising the consensus on the upside, which is quite positive uh, for investors going forward. So when we think about um, uh, the more fundamentals in terms of the opportunities uh, in China. Uh, uh, valuations, of course, have increased, but they're still relatively cheap compared to historical performance. Another reason that China remains attractive to investors is that it remains a counterpoint to the US Federal Reserve, which remains hawkish and has hinted at higher than expected interest rate hikes in the next few months. So when the global economy starts to slow down, China usually is the one start to stand out to support the recovery of the global economy. So that happened in 2008 during the global financial crisis. That also happened in 2021 uh, in the initial stage of the COVID-19 situation, right? I think for this year, it's possible we are seeing similar kind of the counter cyclical role China is going to play because we know this year, one of the theme is the global slowdown, right? Are we going to have the recession or not? I mean, it's still subject to the debate, but I think at the high chance we're going to see the slowdown uh, in the US economy, the slowdown in the European economy, etc. right? So, uh, which means potentially the China's equity market, China's renminbi assets may potentially become, play a role to hedge against the slowdown in the global economy. For investors who like to invest in the China reopening play, two sectors stand out, the digital economy and green energy. Think about China's case, so the green economy is not only important in terms of how you can save your climate, it's also important for China how you can uh, keep your leading position in certain sectors because you know China didn't do very well in certain uh, traditional energy sectors because China lack of oil, you know, lack of natural gas, etc. So that's why I think the green energy, the renewable energy, become one of the interesting sectors. You know, China can find their own value, right, to 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 keep their position uh, in the leading position. That, that's why I think the green part of the story will definitely uh, be very important for China because uh, it's not only about how you can you know grow your economy; it's also about how you can reboot your your consumption. But market watchers also caution investors to hedge against the geopolitical risks facing China at the moment. Tensions between the US and China are at the highest they've been in decades. One way investors can mitigate potential risks is by not investing directly in Chinese firms. You've got great companies that are targeting China at the moment. You've got Procter & Gamble, you've got Unilever, you've got a Starbucks, right? And so that's another American company that is expanding fairly quickly within China. You've got Yum Brands, and Yum Brands is listed in America, and uh, it is also targeting China. So within Yum Brands, you've got Kentucky Fried Chicken, you've got Pizza Hut, and you've got Taco Bell. So there are lots of ways in which you can look at China and say, 
yes, this is an economy that is beginning to mature. And so therefore, I'm interested in investing in a mature economy rather than a fast growing economy. So rather than to invest in Chinese companies, I would much rather invest in non-Chinese companies that are targeting the Chinese consumers and to some extent, let them take the risk rather than I take the risk. As always, investors are advised to diversify their portfolios and they should brace themselves for a volatile few months ahead. Say for an investor uh, who's considering um, adding more China, but if they already have a lot of emerging market equities, um, then they may demand less China exposure than someone who has a portfolio that has a lot of uh, US stocks or Singapore um, stocks inside. So it is important, regardless of where you are investing, to just to consider the volatility of the exposure that you may be uh, undertaking. And of course, currency risk. Um, that's very relevant. If, if, if you're looking to invest in another country and their currency is sliding, or your home currency is appreciating as uh, in Singapore at the moment, we have a very strong Singapore dollar, so that can be a headwind for your foreign uh, returns going forwards.